Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Harker Road Adams channel here on YouTube. I'm your host, Drew Hare, with our analysts, Chris Adams and Matt Harker Road. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, perfect. I, you, I love that. I set it up for you, Matt, and you were right there with it. So. Knock um, it down. We, <laughs> we are here to talk about the, uh, we're talking about the, uh, the different, uh, the teams uh, after the 2021 NFL draft, after I learned how to talk again, uh, after the, uh, we're about two weeks past the NFL, into the 2021 NFL draft. Um, we've already talked a number of, uh, number of times about free agency. So you guys can go back and look at our past videos. Um, and if you want to go back and look at how right our analysts were a couple weeks ago, um, they were 32 for 32. Actually, both of them were, um, which is surprising because they had different mock drafts. But if you want to find out for yourself how they did, go back and watch our last video posted. I think it was Wednesday of, uh, you know, two weeks. Monday of draft week, yeah. Monday of draft week. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Um, so now, we'll, since we've been two weeks past the draft, most of the most of the free agents have been signed. There's obviously going to be a number of free agents that are still out there. But for the most part, we just kind of wanted to start off by talking about the draft, and then we'll dive on into our favorite segment, Let's Talk Tears, of all the different teams. And then uh, you'll get some of our thoughts on the 2021 NFL schedule that's been released um, in the last 24 to 4, 36 hours as well. So um, whoever wants to go first with their draft thoughts, um, how'd you guys feel about just the overall and, you know, your initial thoughts? Well, I think, I think Chris, as our NFL insider, should definitely start there since uh, if you've watched the draft, uh, you probably saw Chris Adams, uh, you know, as a prominent figure on your television screen since he was uh, invited by the Browns and front and center uh, with, uh, you know, uh, the best seats in the house for the 2021 draft there. Now, Chris, now, do your shoulders still hurt from carrying Adam Schefter for a full weekend or <laughs> do you feel better? <laughs> Yeah, no, it was uh, it was a great experience being there in the draft. Yeah, I was there, um, there, there were with the Browns. Um, uh, I was actually there with my buddy Nick Dudukovich from uh, Fan Sided Factory of Sadness, which is a great Cleveland sports blog. If you want to check them out, um, and uh, yeah, it was kind of the, their front and center center in the inner, inner circle. So got to uh, you know boo Roger Goodell, who by the way is a clever bastard um, because he went out there on stage with Bernie Kosar, Joe Thomas, and Jarvis Landry. Um, to kind of minimize the booing uh, that he did. Um, but yeah, being right there, being able to hear the, uh, the, the right picks and, um, you know, as, as, as they came in, um, you know, Matt started four for four on his mock, um, but quickly unraveled after that. Um, of course. Yeah, um, but just kind of a couple of general, general thoughts I had. Um, I mean, there were, you know, I think teams by and large were pretty smart. Like t players ended up, to, to teams where they, where they made sense. Um, you know, San Francisco, Matt was correct in Trey Lance over um, uh, Matt Jones. Um, and then Matt Jones ends up falling to New England, which again, if he wasn't going to go number three, he was going to New England. That was kind of set, set in stone there. Um, mm -hmm. I know I didn't put this in my mock, um, but I thought about it later that week. Um, and Matt can, ver can back me up on this because I, I, I did talk, do it in a, a second mock that we did, we did later in the week. I liked the idea of uh, Chicago moving up for Justin Fields. Um, I thought it was a bold move, a move that Ch Chicago absolutely had to do. Um, you know, they're, they're in quarterback purgatory, making a move like that. Um, I think, you know, it, it's certainly bold whether or not it'll, I think Fields is going to be pretty good. So I, I, I think that's a smart move. Um, uh, you know, they're, uh, and then I'm, I'm obviously going to credit my, my, my hometown Browns. They did not, they did not disappoint uh, being there. Um, you know, they were, you know, Greg Newsom was a guy that I did have the Browns taking Newsom um, in, in our mock a couple weeks ago. Um, I, oh, I had them trading up to get him and they didn't have to do that. They no. Barry, sat there, let the board come to him. Um, didn't do anything rash. Um, and uh, it, it, it played out perfectly. And then they come back to get um, Jeremiah Wasu Karamoa in the second round. Um, where they did trade up to grab him in round two, which was a great move. Um, kind of just other quick first round thoughts. Um, uh, I correctly guessed that the, the, the Panthers were not going to take a quarterback, um, with, uh, with, uh, which was a, a different from Matt. But um, I was a little surprised that they, they stood pat and took J.C. Horn. Um, my guess is they probably tried to trade down, but just weren't getting, getting any takers there. Um, you know, you'd have thought maybe they then would have get, taken a weapon for Darnold there or a lineman or something to help Darnold out um, instead of going with the defense. So that was a little curious to me. Um, another, like, R Rashawn Slater to the Chargers was just one of those picks that, like, most people 
that was a pretty common mock and that ended up happening. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the first round went, uh, went pretty, pretty, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say chalk cause there, there really isn't such a thing, but most of the picks, you know, made, made sense. You could understand why they did it. So maybe teams are getting smarter. Yeah, I mean, I think the only real shock or surprise in the first round is what uh, whatever Las Vegas decided to do with taking, you know, what people had is maybe like, you know, a guard uh, taken when there's plenty of good tackles on the board. So it's kind of a weird uh, for a guy who plays guard and they're going to force him to play tackle or something. Uh, you know, Alex Leatherwood's kind of a weird pick up there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the Jamar Chase pick, I think it's the right move. I actually went five for five because I called Jamar Chase as well, you if did. you recall. Um, so I just want to put that out there. After that, I don't think I got a single one right. But, <laughs> but five for five to start, I'll take that. Um, but I think that's the right move. I think they did the right thing, uh, Cincinnati. A uh, little surprising for a lot of people, but I think it was the right move. Um, I just think that, you know, the, the three wide receivers that were at the top of this board – we're far, you know, or right up there with the top tiers wide receivers we've seen come off. And Jamar Chase is probably the best of the bunch on paper. Um, and if you think, if you look at Sewell, maybe you think he's probably not up there with the top tier tackles that have come off the board recently in the past couple of years. Um, but I mean, he was probably that he was obviously the first tackle taken in this draft, but maybe not up there with the top tackles that have come off the board early in the first round, late recent draft. So it depends on how you look at it. Um, but so I don't hate that. And they also did some things to kind of address their offensive line and the free agency. So it makes sense to me. Um, the other, you know, like shocking picks. I don't know if there really is the, the Travis Etienne pick to Jacksonville is a very urban Meyer pick, but yeah. I don't think it's a smart pick. Um, I mean, they, they have a good running back there that they got uh, what, in, as an undrafted free agent yeah. the year before mm-hmm. who had a hell of a year. Um, now there'll be a little more, you'd think there'd be, if anything, less pressure on him uh, since there's got an offensive weapon now as a, a quarterback. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, the story of the draft probably was the Miami Dolphins and everything that they managed to do um, to try to, not only increase their draft capital, which of which they had a ton, they did that. They increased their draft capital for the next years coming up. They traded back up with not much put into it and got their number one, the, you know, their wide receiver off the board, assuming that they didn't want, you know, that they didn't need to take pits, you know, all the things that they gave up. If, if Waddell, if Waddle was the guy that they wanted, they got him, um, you know, so, uh, you know, that, in hindsight, if we look back at this draft and, you know, it's so hard to predict which wide receiver is going to be the best wide receiver, you know, look, just look at Justin Jefferson for last year. Um, So it's so hard to do that. But if, if Waddell ends up being that guy, this is going to look like one of the best draft moves of all time, uh, what they managed to do. And um, alternatively, I kind of like what uh, the, the, I mean, I not alternatively, but additionally, I kind of like what Baltimore did. Um, I kind of like their picks. I thought that they shouldn't have made that move with Kansas city. I don't think making Kansas city better helps Baltimore out. And that's what they did uh, with that trade, but what they got with it, I think they, they made, they took some real flyers on some guys that could turn out to be amazing players in the NFL uh, with, with the, uh, the edge player from Penn state who runs a four, three uh, at 600 pounds or whatever the hell he weighs now to 260. Still, it's ridiculous. Like it, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. And then uh, the biggest, maybe the best catching wide receiver who just didn't play last year. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, so in, um, oh, what's his name? Burchard. Yeah. Um, Bateman. Anyway, Rashad, Rashad Bateman. Bateman. Yeah. Rashad mm-hmm. Bateman. Yeah. That is, I was mixing the two game names together <laughs> there, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, those are the, my, I guess my key takeaways. I feel, I feel like everybody else is with what Chris said, you know, uh, you knew that, ki- the Chargers were going to take a tackle. Whichever tackle fell to them was going to be the guy they took. Happened to be Slater. Um, you know, you go down and you're like, okay, it, Miami needed a playmaker. They got theirs. Um, you know, the uh, Steelers needed um, uh, a running back. They got their running back. Uh, so it, 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 it did feel a little bit of like, you know, as much as these teams like to say they take the best available player, a lot of times they end up taking – the best player at a position of need, which is a little different. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I thought Cleveland did a great job 
uh, hosting. Uh, I thought it was like the oh, most yeah. biggest fanfare that I've seen in one of those. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully that kicks the, these drafts up a little bit, bit when it moves to the next place, Las Vegas next year, I think Vegas is where it's going. Year, yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to put up a hell of a party. Uh, so, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. So yeah, all in all, I think it was a win for the NFL. And honestly, I, I don't think there's a lot of, there was Alex Leatherwood's the only reach pick that you can really look at and maybe Travis Etienne. Those are the two, right? So, um, yeah. So all in all, pretty chalky, but that's what you kind of want out of an NFL yeah. draft. Like I said, I think teams are getting better. Like, and it shows mm-hmm. you, yes, m- most of the mock drafts are wrong, but I think most the, the mock, the mock drafters know what they're talking about. Like, you know, if C- Cincinnati takes Sewell instead of Chase, that throws off an entire person's mock, but that doesn't mean that the process was wrong in that. Like, you know, there was not, um, you know, the, the, actually, you you mentioned Leatherwood, Matt. I'm also going to throw the uh, the Peyton Turner pick by um, New Orleans in round uh, in round one. That was a little surprise. He was a guy that had been mocked as a second. I was hoping, actually, he might fall to the Browns in the second round, uh, but New Orleans went up and, and got him early. Um, but again, what were we saying into going into this draft? These edge rushers, no one's really sure who's going to be the best one or where they kind of fit. So that actually kind of tracked as well. Um yeah, and, and to, to Matt, just one thing I want to add on what you said about the Dolphins. Um, I agree. Um, you know, they definitely set themselves up here. I do think that they were probably hoping to come out of this thing with Pitts or Chase when they moved back up. Didn't happen, but Jalen Waddle is a pretty good consolation prize. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know what their board said, but yeah, I mean, Pitts probably was up there. But you would have thought maybe if they were at three, they felt like they had to trade they would have to have stayed there to take him, I would think. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Jamar, sure. I mean, if Jamar was on the board and Waddell was on the board, they probably take Jamar in that position. But again, mm-hmm. wide receiver so hard to pick. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, and just adding another team here that I was kind of going through, you know, say what you want about Zach Wilson, you know, being the second quarterback off the board to the Jets. But I really like, you know, if he hits, I mean, between him and then Elijah Vera Tucker, the offensive guard from USC, and then Elijah Moore, uh, the yeah, stud they wide did exi- What the Jets did not do with Darnold. Like, they mm-hmm. quarterback and then said, okay, we're going to get a lineman and a wide receiver with our next two picks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they they took positions in need. They got them filled. And, you know, Zach, Zach Wilson's not going to be walking into, you know, an empty cupboard like Sam Darnold was at times. Um, but I also appreciate that Zach Wilson managed uh, Zach Wilson's mom managed to milkshake duck herself in a week. So <laughs> it's my uh, it's my favorite thing when someone becomes hot on the Internet and five minutes later they get canceled. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Are you surprised that it took a week or that? It, yeah, no, I, I I just love the whole, every time it happens, it's like, oh, this person, we love them. And then, oh, this person we loved last week. We hate this person mm-hmm. now. Yep. Milkshake Duck. <laughs> yeah. Milkshake Duck is undefeated regardless of, it comes for everybody, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, as we kind of shift away from talking about the draft, we wanted to kind of shift into our one of our favorite off season and actually even just regular season games. Uh, let's talk tiers. Um, do you guys want to start at the top or should we start at the bottom and work our way up? to the top what you guys need to do top. yeah let's uh top. Let's and, I, top. I, I, and i also want to want to say to the fans at home these are not our official position predictions those will come mm-hmm. this summer this was just kind of breaking it down and these aren't even power rankings this is just like no. tiers of where where we see the teams falling right now correct all right well let's go ahead and start at the tippy top the super bowl favorites and you guys uh so we're going to go off of chris's uh tiers and then uh matt obviously you can uh comment on that as well we can obviously make i'm gonna rip them apart yeah that's that's what you're here for that's what makes a good analyst um so the super bowl favorites are the two teams that were just in the super bowl like three months ago um tampa bay buccaneers and the kansas city chiefs so um i mean kansas city i think for what i've seen you know completely restructured offensive line um they just got destroyed in that super bowl by tampa bay and being able to just kind of on the fly rebuild an entire offensive line going into this year to help protect mahomes get another year for you know the the you know the running back and the wide receiver cores um they're you know kansas city is just gonna be as strong as ever and then you know you know, ageless wonder for Tampa Bay, you know, Brady <laughs> bringing everybody back and then just kind of reloading from there. Um, you know, those, those two are the top two teams for me. So what do you guys want to comment? Yeah. I mean, there's a reason there aren't too many Super Bowl rematches and it's because teams aren't teams in the Super Bowl typically do not a bring back all 22 starters and all of the whole entire coaching staff 
or B, greatly improve their biggest position of weakness from a year ago. But that mm -hmm. happened this year. So, um, you know, not going to rubber stamp these two to play in L.A. next year, but I think they're, you know, the clear betting favorites. Yeah, I think, like, I mean, the NFL is so crazy. Uh, one injury takes either of these teams probably out of the rate, you know, out of the realistic possibility of making a Super Bowl. If either of their quarterbacks go down, anything can happen. But, uh, like, the likelihood of them either making the play, you know, the Super Bowl with a, one of their quarterbacks gone is, is, is unlikely. But uh, if you look at them on paper and you were to, to condition this or run it, a simulation through Madden, uh, I'd say that, you know, uh, the AFC probably ends up with Kansas City in the Super Bowl more often than not. And the uh, NFC ends up with Tampa Bay. And uh, kudos and hats off to both of these teams for making uh, a lower salary cap work with keeping their entire teams together. I don't even know how the hell that's possible, but they managed to do it. And one of them managed to make the worst position group on their team. They're going to they're probably going to start four new players on the offensive line this year, which is crazy, especially when they added multiple time pro bowlers at one of those positions. And it's like, mm -hmm. what do you do? How do you do this? And they managed to, and it's for them, it's because Mahomes' contract hasn't kicked in, right? That, yeah. That's the big yeah. kicker. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how Tampa Bay managed to do it. I don't know what wormholes and loopholes they found money in, but um, whatever they did, uh, everybody else has got to take a page out of that book uh, because uh, yeah, it's just, it's insane. I don't, I don't, how do you end up paying Gronkowski twice what you paid him last year? Like, how does that happen? Right. Uh, but, and then still be under the cap. It, it doesn't make sense, but here we are, the NFL in 2021. <laughs> so with those two teams up top, okay. So I'm looking at the uh, Super Bowl odds on one of the, uh, the Vegas uh, bookie sites. Who do you think has the third best odds? Those two are the top two for the Super Bowl odds for 2022. Who do you think has the third best odds? As of right now, Possibly. I'm going to say it's. Got, I'm going to say it's got to be an AFC team. So it's either uh, Buffalo or or uh, the Browns. I would say. Chris, what do you think? I said Baltimore. Okay, Bills are third plus thirteen hundred. Ravens fourth at plus fourteen hundred. In fact, this site uh, has a, all the Browns just behind the Packers at plus eighteen hundred. So, I mean, we're we'll talking about all these teams. I mean, all these teams we talked about. I mean, as we move on to the Super Bowl contenders groups the Bills, the Browns, the Ravens, um, the Rams, Seattle, San Francisco, they're all right up there in terms of odds. And a lot of those teams have just kind of rebuilt. Um, you know, so obviously San Francisco is dealing with a ton of injuries and then, you know, maybe dealing with a quarterback change midseason. I don't expect that. We don't think Trey Lance is going to start in week one in San Francisco, but, you know, if, if by week nine, week 10, he comes around and they, they stay healthy, they're only a year removed away from the Super Bowl and they can probably get back there again. Um, and of course we have Green Bay for now, because as of right now, Aaron Rodgers is still the Green Bay Packers starting quarterback. We'll see what happens in the next couple of months. But, you know, that team, you know, comments and thoughts about the, the Bills, the Browns, the Ravens, the Packers, the Rams, the Seattle uh, Seahawks and San Francisco. Man, that's most of the NFC <laughs> West, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's the, that's the I guess that's my takeaway about that tier is, uh, I mean, just looking at their schedules. Uh, all, all the weird thing is, I think San Francisco technically has like the softest schedule of any team in the NFL last by wins from last year, mm -hmm. uh, which is crazy uh, because they're in a division with three Super Bowl contending teams. Um, so, I mean, in actuality, that that schedule's probably not as easy as it is on paper. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, the NFC to me is a little more closed off even though you have, I mean, you have to start considering some teams. I mean, if Tampa Bay can stay healthy, they're clearly the favorites in the NFC. I think, I think the AFC is a little bit tight, yeah. tighter of a race. Um, just because I think even when you have, I mean, I know their offensive line was bad um, going this year, but it's no guarantee that their offensive line is going to be significantly improved. Sometimes offensive lines just don't gel when you're putting four new starters there and it becomes a little more tricky and I think the Bills have gotten better. The Browns have clearly gotten better. Um, who knows what Baltimore is any day of the week? Uh, so, you know, if, if, if MVP, uh, you know, if the, the MVP quarterback that we know uh, he can be in Baltimore, um, you know, puts it back together, then they're a scary as hell team. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen. He looked real bad through portions of last year, uh, but at the same time, 
yeah, I'm good. At, yeah, I'm good at other portents as long as he takes a poop. It's fine. Uh, he's much better uh, after that. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, f- I feel like the NFC is, uh, you know, a little more closed off of a race. I, I agree, Matt. I think, like, if you just look at, like, the, the top team and then the next contenders, I think Buffalo, Cleveland, and Baltimore are closer to Kansas City than Green Bay, uh, San Francisco, LA and Seattle are closer to Tampa. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, you know, the Saints last year, you, know, you had the Saints and, you know, obviously they're going to be going through it in a uh, huge change just culturally. And then obviously yeah. at the start of quarterback wise, you know, they're, they're still probably going to be in contention for the playoff contenders as you have in our next year as, you know, yeah. sneak peek yeah. for that. But I mean, th- they were right up there for most of that, you know, yeah. last year as a potential, you know, Super Bowl contender. And then last few years. Yeah, well, yeah, and you just don't know what to expect from you know yeah. the Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston yeah. experience. You know, <laughs> there's so much unknown even with either of them. Yeah, no. Um, as we kind of moved on, as as I alluded to, the playoff contenders. So this is a pretty uh, large tier of some really good teams. We just don't think that they're like you know ready for prime time, ready for Super Bowl um, aspirations yet. But they could get there. You know, there's a you know, long season, mm-hmm. and you just never know what to expect. So that playoff contenders tier consists of the Miami Dolphins. Tennessee Titans, Indianapolis Colts, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Washington football team. Well, actually, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the Washington football team here in a couple of minutes. Um, the Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings, the New Orleans Saints, and the Arizona Cardinals. So talking about those playoff contender teams, uh, any team jumping out at you guys as, as you, you know, post transactions and post draft has like really jumped out at you as a potential one that could jump up into that Super Bowl uh, contenders tier? So, I mean, the reasons why these, why these teams I think are not Super Bowl contenders is because they all have one or more pretty significant flaws. They're good overall teams, but they've got, they, 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 they've got some flaws. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, the, the smart money there is to say Tennessee because they've been kind of knocking on the door the last couple of years. Um, but the defense was atrocious last year. Um, so if they can get a little bit better, I mean, I think with what with Derrick Henry can do, and then Tannehill is has played has now played two seasons of pretty high level um, football, and he's the perfect quarterback for that offense and what they want to do. Um, so there, I mean, there, there's the first one who comes to mind. I mean, you know, I might steal Matt's thunder here, um, but I might throw Minnesota um, as another possibility. I mean, I think they're in a weak division. Um, you know, if Rodgers leaves Green Bay, which I still think is a long shot, but then they become the clear mm-hmm. favorite there. But, you know, they've got um, Dalvin Cook. They've got Justin Jefferson. They've got, um, you know, the defense needs some work, but they did kind of work on that in, in the offseason. And, you know, we know what Matt thinks about Kirk Cousins, so I'm not going to steal his thunder there, but you can win with Kirk Cousins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for me this whole tier says, okay, they're either, uh, you know, a good team with a reasonably decent quarterback uh, with some problems or there were a great roster with a giant question mark at quarterback. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, if, if one of these, yeah, if one of these quarterbacks takes off and plays amazingly, then that's going to be that team. If, if Tua can play great in Miami, if uh, you know, if uh, uh, what's his face, Wentz plays great in, in uh, Indianapolis, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like any of those, if any of those quarterbacks, if, if Jameis has a breakout year for some reason and, and it won't happen, but if it does happen, <laughs> you know, the Saints are in the playoffs, right? That happened. Like the, the rosters are good enough to do that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So across the board, all those teams, I mean, Indianapolis was the only team that was top 10 in offense and defense last year, and they improved at quarterback probably. So like, uh, you know, I guess if I was going to pick a team and probably is a very, very astute point, but uh, let's just assume Wentz is better than Rivers on a retirement uh, tour. Um, but so let's just say that. So Wentz, uh, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and I'll say Indianapolis is my my dark horse favorite out of that group. Um, I do like Minnesota. I think that if Kirk Cousins can't do it this year, then you've got all your proof that he's never going to be more than a Andy Dalton in this league. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, he's got everything lined up for him now. Um, they helped him out um, offensive line wise. They've helped him out, uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball in off season. I just feel like that's a good pick, um, but um, we will see. Uh, but yeah, I'll take Indianapolis as my flyer pick out of that group. 
Yeah, and I think every year we always have like one or two teams that is going to jump out of this tier in the Super Bowl contenders. Because I think we, I think you guys had Tampa Bay here last year, right? You guys knew that Tampa Bay had Tom Brady. We didn't know what yeah. Tom Brady had left, especially after that last year in New England. But he has a really good core around him, and obviously getting a lot of, you know, a lot of help from from Gronk and and you know playoff Lenny and getting Antonio Brown. A lot of guys came to Tampa Bay, and that changed a lot of the equations with especially around a pretty good team so you know if Wentz is able to stay upright which was something he had some big time problems with in Philadelphia if he's able to do that in Indianapolis I think that's a great pick especially for <laughs> playing in the division with the the Jaguars and the and the Texans you know four times a year yeah I mean if it's like one of these rookies takes off to like fields or something uh, it could be very interesting but I'll take a guy I've seen play a little bit of NFL football as my pick not so great NFL football, I would say. <laughs> oh, well, that's a great segue because speaking of not great NFL football, let's talk about the NFC East because they are right there in between the playoff contenders because there has to be a playoff contender out of this group and don't yep. know slash rebuilding because it seems like they're perpetually doing that. So the NFC East is its own separate tier because we <laughs> sure as hell just do not know what to make of any of these teams. Like, you know, Looking at the four on paper, like I think Washington might be the best team in that division. You could take 30 seconds and convince me it might be Dallas or five minutes to convince me it'd be, you know, the Giants or, or Philadelphia. But I mean, what are you guys, what are you guys making of this division? So well, I, think the, I think the Eagles are clearly the worst team in that division. Yeah, I was going to say, if I can take five minutes and convince you somehow that Philadelphia is the best team in that division, I got some land in, uh, I got some swamp land I'm, in Florida. Like I say, if, if it take, that's, that's, why, that's why it would take the most amount of time. Like, I'm not All saying right, you're convinced, you can try, but. Yeah, if you want to... yeah I mean, I think I mean, if you look at it, Washington's defense was one of the better defenses in the league last year. Um, they should be better on offense because, A, they have a competent quarterback now. Um, I, I don't – you never know what you're going to get out of, uh, out of Fitzmagic, if you're going to get Fitzmagic or uh, Fitz, Fitz minusculeness, if that's a word. Um, it you is know, on, any this of the, on this episode. Yeah, it is we'll, now. We'll allow, <laughs> yeah. we'll allow it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. But you know the guy can ball. You know he doesn't need to ball to make that team go because the defense is so good. So they'd be my clear cut – number one, but Dak Prescott was playing an exceptionally high level before he got hurt and he has all of his weapons again. Um, I just feel like, God, you know, sometimes it takes a year breakdown for these like teams to kind of find themselves again. Um, when you look at them on paper and you think that offense should really click and that it did. And then it just didn't with a, a, a different person at quarterback. And so you kind of wonder, if they can get that offense going, the defense seems to be at least slightly improved. Um, it couldn't get any worse. Uh, so I'll go. Yeah. I mean, so you've got one side of the ball really good with a giant question mark on the other side for both of those two teams. I, I think I agree with you that uh, the New, New York giants are a, a giant question mark on both sides of the ball, really their defense played okay through most of the year, but again, you know, it was against the NFC East for half of it. So what does that tell you? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll take – I'm going to take a flyer and take Washington on this one, but uh, it's a <laughs> it's a crapshoot. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I'm still say Washington is probably the best for the reasons Matt said. Um, mm -hmm. Dallas, I'll say a word or two about the Giants. Um, they're improved. Um, they got Galladay. Um, uh, Saquon should be coming back. They actually, Gettleman actually traded down in a draft um, and added another wide receiver and then some other picks. So mm -hmm. they had a pretty good defense a year ago. Um, they've improved. They've added some weapons. It's all on Daniel Jones now. Depending on what he does, is they will go as far as he takes them. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. Well, how about this? Um, do you guys have a prediction about what record is going to win that division? <laughs> Got to recalibrate now for the 17 game season. Um, mm -hmm. What was, what was this? Was there seven and nine? Uh, you can say yeah. nine and nine and eight at this point, or. Yeah, I'm going to say nine and eight. Okay. I'll go 10 and seven. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like. God, somebody's got to win an extra game or two in there, right? <laughs> it can't continue to happen, right? It can't be two years of us thinking, oh, my God, is the team going to get in with six wins? Like, uh, you know, mathematically at week 14, it's like, yeah, it's technically possible. You know, possible. I put a T in that word. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll say 10 and 7. 
All right, sounds good. All right, as we move on to the aptly named don't know tier, um, there is, this is a really interesting tier. Um, it might actually be the most interesting tier um, outside of like, you know, the top tier teams. Um, but th there's five total teams that we have in this don't know tier. And that's the, the Patriots, the Steelers, the Broncos, the Chargers, and the Falcons. And don't know because there's just so many question marks for each of them. Obviously, we know that there is talent on a lot of these teams. And if a breaker, a breaker three goes the right way, they could easily win their respective divisions if something happens. Maybe not Denver, yeah. unless they make yeah. it big, unless they go for a Rodgers trade, which you know, there's rumors still out there. We'll see what happens. But uh, but for some of these teams, it's just, you know, they've been good in the last couple of years, maybe a break or two. They just get back to being really good and being those playoff contenders. But is there one of those teams that you guys just are thinking might like really, you know, project themselves and propel themselves into playoff contention? Yeah. I mean, um, I really like the chart. I really like the chargers uh, mm -hmm. out of that group. Um, you know, I, I think Herbert, you know, was getting abused last year for most of that year when he was back there. Cause that offensive line was so bad. Uh, they've improved that through the draft. Um, I think there's a ton of weaponry there. They had some injuries on defense that are, should be, should be, you know, coming back this year. Uh, I think they're a really good squad um, on paper, at least it's just one of those. Would I be shocked if they came, became, came last in that division? No. Would I be shocked if they were pushing, um, you know, Kansas city for not being able to clinch until week 16 or 17 uh, of the year. No, I wouldn't be shocked. So, you know, to me that, that whole division is really interesting to me. I, I think mm -hmm. the Broncos could do something if you know, if their quarterback situation, you know, kind of resolves itself a little bit. There's so much talent on that roster, um, you know, uh, that he just, I mean, offensively that, the, that, you know, your wide receiving core seems like, one of the better groups in the league. You've got um, a great, you know, tight end. You've got, I mean, you've got lots of stuff going on for you. You've got, you know, one of the top you know, defensive backfields in the, in the league. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are pieces there. Uh, so either one of those wouldn't shock me, but I'll go Chargers. Okay. Chris, uh, you have a team and then obviously any additional thoughts you have. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with Matt on that. The Chargers are clearly the, the, the team to look at coming out of that division. Um, I mean, you could also throw some of those NFC East teams in, in there, right? I mean, I think you could put the, mm -hmm. the best three teams in the NFC East in there as well, too. Um, so, I mean, yeah. maybe Dallas for the reasons Matt said before, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think obviously Pittsburgh can, is a very interesting case. I mean, obviously they won the division last year, but they're back. They to still got a great defense. They do. They do. And obviously if they get anything out of Najee Harris, um, you know, if he, if he establishes, you know, that's what they want to do, have defense, run yeah. the ball, yeah. and then not be just so heavily reliant on a 38, 39 year old quarterback, yeah. regardless of the weapons he has around him. Yeah. So if they're able to do any kind of balance, you know, maybe he, you know, they could easily yeah. just yeah, you know, I, I, go yeah. back up in that playoff contention tier. Yeah, they, um, lost, they lost some pieces in the free agency there on defense. Though, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, they always seem to know how to reload on defense. So, uh, yeah, I, mean, I guess it wouldn't shock me if they were pushing with the Browns and, you know, pay, or Browns in Baltimore like they did last year, you know, and that group was really tight at the top. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if that was a, that happened again. I, I don't think we're going to see an 11-0 start um, no. by, by Pittsburgh this year. Um, I, you know, I think their schedule kind of did that for them last year a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and their schedule doesn't line up quite the same this year, uh, to do that, but, um, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't shock. I'm obviously, uh, it wouldn't shock me. I'd be surprised if Pittsburgh came in last in that division, but it's probably not their doing if they, <laughs> I just don't think Cincinnati is very good. <laughs> yeah. Cincinnati is a year away from being a year yeah. away. Like one of those types yeah. of yeah. situations. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. And for the last five teams we have under the rebuilding tier, um, we have the Texans, the Jaguars, the Bengals, the Lions, and Carolina. Though I think Carolina, I would kind of throw in that don't know. I mean, obviously, I think having Maybe. Sam Darnold. Um, yeah. Would you... <laughs> you say the Jets, too? They're also in the rebuilding. Uh, Jets are there. They weren't on the – they were not on the list, but the, the, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the Jets there as well. So um, some really interesting teams even at the bottom here who are obviously rebuilding teams. But, um, Chris, any thoughts on this tier and which way you want yeah, to Yeah, I mean, m most of the bad teams – most of them got better, right? Jacksonville should be better just for having Trevor Lawrence. Jets should be better just because they added more talent. The Bengals should be better with Joe Burrow coming back and adding Chase and some free agency acquisitions. Um, 
The Lions will probably be worse um, because yeah. they don't have. Uh, I mean, I think they're 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 building for the future, and I think Jared Goff is is decent, but they just don't have any weapons on offense. Um, you know, Houston is probably going to be the worst team in the league. The Eagles are also in this group. Um, I think they're going to be, be, be pretty bad. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, I think some of these teams are going to be improved. Um, their futures are bright, but their presence, not as much. Yeah. I mean, I think Detroit is close to a blowing up situation as we've seen, uh, since Miami, you know, tried to do it and, and Jacksonville has done it and maybe both successfully we'll find out in a year or two, but it looks like Miami's successful at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, with a 10 win season last year. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, to me, Carolina is the one team I agree with you, Drew, that maybe doesn't feel like they should be here. Like it, they would have a problem with this, you know, us <laughs> tearing them here. Uh, but really it's just who is Darnold, you know, it, yeah. it is, is he worth anything at this point? I, I don't, I don't know. And I don't think anyone knows, but if he can't, again, I think we talked about this when Darnold was traded here. If he can't get it done here with the weapons he has in Carolina, he's not getting it done anywhere that you can't, yeah. you don't need to get much better than what they have uh, offensively to be able to do something. And if you do need more than that, then you're never going to be a quarterback in this league. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're a bigger question mark. Um, than some of the other ones, but I mean, I, I agree. Houston's going to be horrible. The Lions are going to intentionally be horrible, um, and you know, so Jacksonville wants to improve. You know, maybe they get to six wins. I wouldn't be shocked if Cincinnati won six games randomly. They do get um, Jacksonville. Does get Houston twice. So that does help. Yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the Cincinnati Bengals get to the Lions too, don't they? So, uh, you know, yeah, we'll we'll see, but. Uh, yeah, these these teams are either crossing their fingers that they win or crossing their fingers they yeah. lose. So, <laughs> did you uh, did you guys see who the Panthers open up with to start the season? Darnold Ball. It's yep, yeah, revenge game. The Jets revenge game. Uh, that's some horrible and football right there. Darnold <laughs> Donald to Robbie Anderson for like. 200 yards and three touchdowns. Like, just, just guarantee it. That's just what's going to happen. Um, all right, guys. So we are done with our tiers. Any kind of additional thoughts about the tiers or any, any teams that we haven't talked about before we shift gears to the schedule talk? I just think in recent years, the NFL has gotten a lot more chalky, I think. Um, you know, for a while there, right, in like the mid-2000s, in the, the early 2010s, you had every year you had a team going from last place to the playoffs, like every year. And that's kind of – stopped a little bit in the last few years. The teams at the top have gotten better and the teams at the bottom have gotten worse. Um, I think last year, what, the Bears were the only team that finished eight and eight. Um, And actually now they're the last team ever to finish eight and eight. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, the parody I think is is drifting out as more teams are trying, are, you know, you can debate the tanking strategy, whether or not it's a good move, but I think you're having more teams that are trying that, Um, you know, more teams that are, you know, trying to either have a great quarterback or a rookie quarterback because of the contract. So I don't think you're, you're seeing you, it's getting easier to predict the play, the playoff teams um, because, you know, there's not these big shifts that there maybe used to be in the past. Yeah. And I think some of that goes down to that, the NBA um, kind of system of, you know, you saw players gravitate to Tampa Bay last year, like uh, older players gravitate there to try to win a championship. You probably saw some players that wouldn't have signed in Cleveland this year if they hadn't made the playoffs last year. Um, specifically, uh, you know, a guy that they tried to sign uh, a year before, uh, he didn't sign there. And then he comes back this year and signs there because he thought, you know, that there was, uh, a, you know, uh, a, a better chance of getting to the yeah. Super Bowl or playoffs. So Jadavian Clowney moving from a good team to a, from a good team to a good team to now his team, he thinks is the best opportunity to get far in the playoffs. So I think you see that a little bit more in the NFL now than you did previously. And if you can reload some positions through free agency, although it's not the way to build a team necessarily, unless you're Bill Belichick this year, um, you know, it's, it's at least a way to improve your roster enough to keep you in the higher tier for longer. 
All right, let's go ahead and shift gears to the 2021-22 NFL schedule. Uh, as we talked about, there are, uh, you know, now we have the, the extension of, this, of the, uh, the schedule this year. Obviously, every team will be playing 17 games, so you'll at least have 18 weeks of the regular season. Um, obviously, so that'll be extending out into, man, going to go into that, what, second week of, of February before that Super Bowl is being played. But, um, yeah, it's any kind of schedule, you know, takeaways or quirks or anything you guys have seen so far based on your review of the, uh, the schedule so far? Well, I put a list together, so I'll let Chris go Ooh, first because I'm, I, I'm raring to go on the schedule topic. Yeah, Chris, go is, get started. The, the deep dive into the schedule is, uh, is, is Matt's territory, but um, I'm just going to focus a little bit on week one, the opening. Okay. Um, so you got, you know, on the, the Thursday night kickoff, of course, you've got um, the Tampa Bay um, playing against Dallas. I mean, Dallas ended up with five primetime games. I mean, it's, right. boys, it's, it's that's, you know, the mm -hmm. American team. Working. Um, but, I mean, I think they also, the, the networks might want to see Tom Brady throw for seven touchdowns in the opening week. Um, <laughs> Dallas did not improve. Do they, though, at the day. same time? Even if it's Cowboys, do they really want to see Tom Brady throw seven touchdowns, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's going to be a zillion points scored in that game. Um, so I think that will be a fun one to watch. And, yeah, I mean, you do not want to clunker an opening Thursday night clunker. It's like, so mm -hmm. having a fun game to, to, to kick the season off. Um, and then I, um, on some of the, the Sunday slate, the early games, um, Pittsburgh versus Buffalo, um, I think is a really good one, kind of two smash mm -hmm. teams, two teams that should be in the, the, pl the playoff um, consideration all year. I think that's a really good one. Um, and then, you know, if you watch that as your early game, then obviously the 425 Cleveland, um, Kansas City, get the popcorn ready for that one. Um, you know, Kansas City, <laughs> Cleveland, the, the great end of that game. Um, mm -hmm. The Browns. Probably will not be playing against Chad Henney. We're not sure yet, just in case, but probably Chad Henney's not going to start that game. Um, although I think Kansas City should start him just to prove it wasn't a fluke. Like, come on, cowards. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be an awesome game. Um, and then you kind of go into the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the night game there. You've got, um, the, what is it? See, LA, help me on that one, Matt. LA and uh, I think it's the Rams and Bears, I think. Yeah, yeah Rams, Rams and Bears. Bears. Yep. Um, not a great matchup there. Um, but you know, you got two like tent pole franchises, I guess, that have been around for a while. Um, and the, the new stadium, um, should be a, actually that should be you got the, the offensive battle with Cleveland and Kansas City, you're going to get a defensive battle. You've got two of the best defenses in the league. Um, maybe you have Justin Fields starting from day one. We'll see. Um, no one wants to see Andy Dalton starting the season. Um, but Andy, Andy Dalton does. <laughs> Matt, St <laughs> Matt, St Matt Stafford. Um, Andy Dalton's mom offense. wants to see him starting week one. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Stafford with the Rams would be good. And then on Monday night, you've got the, the Raiders Ravens. Um, again, brand new stadium mm -hmm. that they weren't able to have fans in last year. Um, and, you know, that's John Gruden on Monday night. You never know what, what, what crazy stuff he's going to do. So. Um, yeah, I think the, I think it's, you, you got some pretty good matchups in week one. You mentioned Darnold bowl, um, which is probably going to be terrible football, but it, that could be one of those games that ends up as like 35, 31, um, it was just a horrible football, but, a, a fun outcome. So yeah, some pretty good, some pretty good weeks, some pretty good opening games. Has a Darnold led team ever scored 35 points in a game? <laughs> is that possible? Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, to go back to what Chris was saying, it, it does feel like that first week uh, on the primetime games, at least, obviously the best game on paper of that weekend is Cleveland, Cincinnati, right? Like the reason Even it's Kansas not in prime time. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cleveland, Kansas City. <laughs> right, but, yeah, the, the reason it's not in prime time is because I think they wanted to give like uh, the Rams state, the, the, the Los Angeles stadium, it's shot in glory yeah. with fans in the stands. The same thing with Las Vegas. And where the Super Bowl is uh, going to be. Yeah. And I, I think that's really what that came down to. Um, yeah. So like some, some things I wrote down on my paper, I said uh, Tampa Bay, crazy, easy schedule. Like the way that theirs lines up, if they're not in the playoffs already, they finish their season Carolina Falcons, Carolina. That's the end of their season. That's three mm -hmm. games. Okay. So it, it, the rest of it's easy too. The first six weeks are like a cake walk. So that they're going to be like six and two, seven and one going into their bye week Then they come out and they have a couple of the tough games that they have to have on their schedule because they won their division. Right. I don't know. They didn't win their division. So their second division. So they got the, the day, the games that they have to play out of that. 
And then they end up with like three of the cakewalkiest games that they could find. Uh, it's just, it's just crazy how, how that happened to randomly work out for the NFL. Um, uh, I do think like we, Chris kind of touched on this Dallas having six, um, six featured games. Green Bay also are five, uh, five primetime games. Green Bay has six featured games. So they have five primetime games, which is the NFL max plus they mm-hmm. have the game against the Browns on Christmas. So that'll be the only game that's shown during that time. All right. Mm-hmm. So the, the craziest thing about that is three of those games are in the back half of the season. So they made them on, on they're on Sunday night. So that way the, mm-hmm. the NFL can move those and flex Plus, those out. If Rogers yeah. doesn't have to be on that team yeah. anymore. So it's a really brainy decision uh, by, <laughs> by the NFL schedulers there. <laughs> also the Browns weirdly, with three, only three primetime or three marquee games. So they had the Christmas game and then two primetime games. I have a feeling the NFL set it up for them to be flexed because they put them on that weird Saturday on the 15th week where they yeah. don't have a date yet. And mm-hmm. I think the idea is there's a couple of games that will probably get flexed later on if the Browns are good. So yeah. if Browns fans don't get too upset about uh, only getting three primetime games. If the Browns play like we think or hope they will play, um, they'll play more of those. So, well, I wonder um, if, 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 you know, because the NFL got burned two years ago by putting all those Browns games, you yeah, know, maybe, in, yeah. in prime time. And then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, they were just, you know, uh, the Freddie Kitchens train wreck season. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Now. So, yeah, no, go ahead. That was, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's the same point, but I think they, they intentionally set it up to make those once the flex starts to happen which is i think 10 this year um Mm -hmm. once that once that happens i think you'll start to see some of these other teams that don't have all those games i think they were giving them the their selves the out to move teams in there later on that they couldn't if they already had so many primetime games so anyway Mm -hmm. um the uh so we talked about san francisco's easy schedule um which is crazy and the only tough teams they have to play are the ones that are in their own division beyond that this should be literally a cakewalk for them especially if they're as good as we think they could be um the bills all right so the bills completely got screwed at the beginning of their season six of the eight teams that they play to start the season uh were were either 10 game winners or they were in the playoffs last year. So the only team that would be not a 10 game winner that was in the playoffs, uh, there was one because t- one of the teams didn't make the playoffs with 10 wins. And one of them uh, was the, the Chicago at eight and eight, but still that's a ton of playoff teams to play in the first eight weeks of the season before you have a bye week. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so if we're talking about how Tampa Bay got the lucky end of the stick, um, somebody wasn't very uh, much liking the bills. And that gets even crazier when you think about how Baltimore got screwed in a stretch, like, which I'm all for, by the way, is not a fan of the Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> the Browns fan, but listen to the end of this schedule. It's ridiculous. So they go Miami, Chicago, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Green mm-hmm. Bay. They get a break with an interdivisional game against Cincinnati and then the Rams and Pittsburgh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, if you want a team that shouldn't that should be in the playoffs, but it's not going to get there, it's that team because that is that is a brutal schedule. That's nine games of teams that are in the upper echelon. I mean, the only one you might argue about is Chicago, uh, and then the one day off they get against a division rival in Cincinnati. Like, wow, the the NFL was not wanting Baltimore to be anywhere. You know, and actually, the weird thing too is the beginning of their schedule isn't that much for cakewalk either. It's 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 rough. Some of those games, um, yeah. I mean, they've got Pittsburgh and Cleveland twice in that group, uh, but then you got they've got other big games in there too coming up. It's just it's just because they have Kansas City, right? At some point, right? Mm-hmm. So that's early oh, in the that's week two, week two. Right? yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So like there there's no there's nothing there's easy about their season. So um, yeah, so I guess those are a couple things. Oh, and I have a couple of superlatives. Uh, the game that everyone will make too much about is the Browns Kansas City game. Uh, if Kansas City wins that game, and the Browns will be the, the Browns will be like, oh, it's the same old Browns. They're not any good anymore. And then the Browns are just going to roll off five wins against bad comp- opponents, so they'll be five and one, and everybody will forget it happened. And if the Browns win, it's going to be like, oh, Kansas City's in a real world of hurt, and it'll be like the st- talking point for five weeks to come, whoever wins that game. So just be prepared for uh, blowhards on the NFL, making too much out of one football game because it's going to happen. And then the game that's going to be full of hype and it's going to be worth it 
but it's going to be an actually horrible football game is going to be Tampa Bay's return to, or Brady's return to new England. That game's going to be garbage. Uh, I promise you <laughs> Tampa Bay, <laughs> Tampa Bay is going to tear them apart in that game. Uh, but everybody's going to be watching it because of the narrative, but uh, we're mm-hmm. all going to regret watching it the day after. <laughs> so there you go. That's my, that's my uh, breakdown of the NFL 2021 season. 21, yeah. 20, halfway through 22. So we have to start breaking it up like the NBA does now since half of it's in the <laughs> <Yeah>. second. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. With everything reopening it, you would think that, you know, this, especially with what the NFL did last year with their schedule, we shouldn't have to do anything else to, to break it up or kind of move it around. So let's hope it stays that way. But yeah, that, that, that Cleveland, <laughs> that Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cleveland stretch for Baltimore just continues just to stick yes. out like, it's insane because you know, the, the crazy, have a bye week in between those. Yeah, the two. craziest part is that Cleveland has a bye week in the middle, so they yeah. go yeah. they go Baltimore bye week Baltimore, which is significantly easier. <laughs> yes, <laughs> than yeah. Cleveland Pittsburgh Cleveland. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, I mean they they did not do them any favors in this draw. Uh, I mean, but again, their schedule is rough. No matter how they sliced it, it was going to be rough. Yeah, but like just I mean just that bye week. I mean I think their bye weeks like week six too. It's like. Yeah. They didn't want them to have a break during this entire run through like 10, 10 win teams and like mm-hmm. playoff teams. It's just crazy. Yeah. Cause that's what I, you know, and based upon our tech change is kind of what I focus on. Just like, when do the good teams have bye weeks and the Browns having a week 13 bye week can be gifting the curse. It'll give them a, a week to hopefully get adjusted for, you know, a playoff run, but man, that's, that's three Late. straight months of games. That's a yeah. lot. And that's really, yeah. really cool. and Tampa Bay gets one where, exactly in the middle of the season the week week, that's the middle of the season like it can't be more (laughs) in the middle than it is (laughs) and why did that happen oh i don't know it's just a random fluke occurrence we just scheduled it the way it it just came up that way the way the algorithm runs right yeah Yeah. it's just the way it happened Uh, all right guys as we kind of uh finish up uh for for tonight any additional thoughts outside of the draft outside of the tiers outside of the schedule anything else that's kind of been bouncing around your head anything else topics wise chris how about we do yeah i mean aaron Rodgers is the kind of the immediate one to go to um i don't mm-hmm. go in anywhere i just think it's you know aaron Rodgers gets pissed off every off season um not without warrant um that, like you know <laughs> The, the, the Packers like stubbornly refused to draft a receiver uh, in the first mm-hmm. round. Um, but, you know, like I've, I've heard that they, they would be asking for three first round picks um, for him. And like, other than maybe the Raiders, no team's going to offer, no team's going to offer that. Um, and Aaron Rodgers, I mean, is he really going to sit out and host jeopardy and give up all that money? Like, no, he's going, he's going to play. You know, they're, they're going to figure it out. I, this is kind of much ado about nothing now. He's going to be under center for the, the Packers um, in the fall. Yeah, I, I think for, for me, the Rodgers thing is kind of like a legacy problem. He's got, if he retires now, his lock status of going in the NFL Hall of Fame kind of goes away. Uh, you know, I think he probably still a lock, but if he's you retire... Yeah, but he's again, the guy's only got one Super Bowl victory, right? Um, you know, if you look at his numbers, he's got what two MVPs, uh, and then there's not he's a got lot. Three MVPs. You have three MVPs? Sorry, yeah. my bad. Uh, but either way, yeah, I mean, I, he, he's, I just see it like, I don't know. It feels like they have done him dirty, and I agree with it, him that they have not done the best job of trying to surround. I mean, they haven't taken an offensive player in the first round in nine years. Um, you know, because they were like, oh, we've got Aaron Rodgers. We're okay. We're fine. And the love, the only one they took was love, right? And that's the only guy that they, mm-hmm. and they, they took offensively in nine years. And it's just like, I get where he's coming from. It makes a ton of sense, but ultimately there's nowhere else for him to go. And I'm kind of with Chris that I don't think he's in retirement mode. Um, I think he's pissed off enough to make them force a long-term contract, which is exactly what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but uh, for my final thought, well, I'll segue away from that. Um, mm-hmm. The NFL is the best organization in the entire world at finding ways to keep you entertained and keep you focused on their sport 
all goddamn year long. Nobody's yeah. close to this. Nobody touches this. I mean, NBA free agency is tons of fun. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. The NBA draft is not so exciting. <laughs> no. And they do it like uh, it's way too close to the season. Or no, it's during the season, right? It, or no, it's right after the season ends, right? Uh, during the after the playoffs. Yeah, right? it'll be, yeah, it'll be like the a draft. Week, yeah. A week. Yeah. yeah a week or, yes. yeah, yeah. It's, so it's too close. It, it, it doesn't. So the draft I mean, is right after to, the season. Yeah. Draft, yeah, right. It's like one week later, they do the draft draw in the middle of the playoffs. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, who nobody even cares about that. Uh, NBA free agency is a ton of fun, but the N- the NFL, like they got that, they got the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl hangover goes away. Immediately get back into free agency like a month later. A mm-hmm. month after that, they get the draft going on. A, a week, couple weeks later, they're back into um, you know the, the schedule release. A couple weeks from now, they'd be doing full time OTAs uh, with you know people sitting there in the stands, especially if, and, uh, some big markets. Uh, and then it's like right back to business as usual. They got three preseason games this year, so uh, it looks that way. You know, it's just going to be, you know, it's just it's a it's a three sixty five league now, um, which no other league can say that. Yeah, I just I I made the comparison of just the NFL schedule really should be just like you know a college football spring game. Like we really should not care as much as we do, <laughs> yeah. but here it is, and and we are just talking about it, and everybody's breaking it down, and everybody just gets really really excited just because it's football. And I think yeah. just especially here in the states, it's like it's football is enough to like really drive everything. Um, yeah, you know, especially compared to the, some of the other sports. So. All right, guys, let's go ahead and finish this for this for this evening. So thank you all so much for watching and joining us tonight. Um, obviously, like and subscribe here on YouTube. You guys can follow us all on Twitter at Hark Adam Sports as well. So for Matt, for Chris, I'm Drew. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.